Okay, let's go. All right, then. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, our topic has been the most important man on earth um, is the Holy Spirit. Amen. And today's topic um, is what is a spiritual man? We're finishing up. I don't know if we finished this part up today, but it is what is a spiritual man. Amen. So have a good time. So I'd like everyone to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter number 2. I'm sorry. No, no, no. 1 Corinthians chapter number 2. Yeah. All right. 1 Corinthians. I know we all know the back of the verse about um, natural man and spiritual man, but we miss out on the, the, the first part of that chapter. So we go to 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, and I'm going to begin reading at verse number 4. Everything today is coming from the King James um, Version. So everything's coming from the King James, so just everyone um, will know the truth. You know what? The Bible says that the truth will set you free. Does everybody understand that? It will set you free. Y'all ready? Going to read verse number four. It, it said, I mean, First Corinthians now. First Corinthians. Two, yes. First Corinthians chapter two, verse number four. King James. Yes, sir. No, no. Verse four. Yes. All right. You ready? Okay. And it reads, and my speech, this is Paul talking, and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and a power that your faith should not stand in the wisdom of man, but in the power of God. Now, this is a tough scripture. I, I wasn't going to talk about this. I was going down and skip everything, but um, it's a very important part when we read verse four, number four and five, and a lot of people don't ever talk about that. It, it talks about, um, look, Paul's telling us, I, I didn't come to my own power, right? I didn't come in the words of the wisdom, I mean, the man's world and wisdom to try to entice you. He's just trying to make that clear. And that's very, very important because man's wisdom, can, can I tell you man's wisdom against, is against God? I want everybody to understand that man's wisdom is against God because we don't live in the world. Amen. We live in the spirit realm. Amen. It's a whole nother realm. It's a whole, we're supposed to be in the kingdom of God. Amen. Um, and it's very, very different. Our thoughts are different than the world's thoughts. They're supposed to be because we our thoughts come from God. They're always supposed to be pure. It's supposed to be holy. Amen. The world's thoughts are what they think, what they believe. And if you, if you look at the world today, the world is horrible right now. All the things are going on. And, and the Bible says before he comes back, there will be a great falling away. And you yeah. see a lot of people falling away. Yeah. A lot of people started, you know, people always say the one save, always save. He can't. He said the great falling away, meaning they was with me yeah. and they uh, fell away. Yeah. They're not with me no more. They fell away. You understand? A lot of musicians who used to sing gospel music has fallen away and they don't even care how they live life because it's all about money. It's all about fame. Yeah. It's about people knowing them. And that's not what God intended their gifts to be used for. Amen. I'm not saying they're not gifted, but they use their gifts for the world and not for God. Amen. Amen. So even you all out there who has gifts, y'all have gifts. Are you using it for God? And are you even using the gifts that God has given you? And so we're going to kind of talk about that. I want to break it down, different difference between um, your wisdom and um, God's wisdom. Amen. So we're going to turn to Matthew. Um, chapter 16. And if I go too fast, just let me know. But this really has to be pointed out. I really have to, to explain to you all um, Matthew chapter 16. And I'm going to begin reading in verse number 21. I really, really want you to understand when we leave here the difference between your wisdom and God's wisdom, which is totally two different things. In order to be with God, it has to be his wisdom. Amen. That's why it says my thoughts and my ways are not your thoughts and your ways. You, you understand that? And you know, later on, a spiritual man understand the things of God. Let me explain that to you. A spiritual man understand the things of God. They're not worried about what's going on in the world. They, they worry about what God is saying. For, for example, I, um, I was talking to a, uh, one of my, my dear friends. Um, I, call him, I call him dear because I don't have too many. <laughs> and uh, I said something. I said, um, I, I am... I'm trying to get um, 20 more percent for my disability. He says, stop right there. He says, no, we're not. You don't try to do nothing. We don't care what the world says. We only care what God says. So you need to change the, what, the way you speak it. He says, yeah. speak positive, speak faith. Don't speak about what they, your, your flesh, because my flesh says this. 
So that means I don't have faith in God. I, I, I'm saying I hope and I think, you know, it all depends on them. It doesn't depend on them. Because if, if God said it, it's going to come to pass. Amen. So that's just an example. How it's just easy. I don't care who you are. My thought process is I'm, I'm getting it according to them. He stopped me. He loved me. He stopped me and said, hold on now. Your thought process is what God says. That's why the song says, if he said it, guess what? Then believe it. So my trust in God is so easy. Out of mouth comes what? Blessing or they come curses. Don't speak a negative. Don't speak things that's not of God into your life. Y'all understand that? So here in Matthew chapter 16, verse 21, it says, this is, it says, from that time forth began Jesus to show unto his disciples. Who is he showing? His disciples, how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the third day. Now he's talking to his disciples, telling them everything that's about to happen. Then Peter took him and began to what? Rebuke him. Now, now this is amazing. How are you going to rebuke the son of God? Come on, tell me, how, how do you rebuke the son of God? Well, this is what Peter says. Be it far from thee. Lord, this shall not be, um, this shall not be unto thee, but he turned. What Peter says, this is not going to happen. Now read the whole verse. Then Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not um, be unto thee. What happened then? But he turned. He turned. Christ turned. Well, this is where Christ turned and made sure he made the eye contact with who? With Peter. And he says, he says this, get thee, come on, read it with me. Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Oh, this is awesome. Now, listen to what he says. He said, now, now I'm going to rebuke. Who did he rebuke? I didn't rebuke Peter, but I rebuke. The thing that's in Peter that says something that went against God's word. I'm rebuking everything that goes against what God said. I know, Christ said, I know what I'm going to do. So if I know what I'm going to do, it's not your job to rebuke me, first of all. You, you don't rebuke me when, I, when, when God said that. But he says, you use what kind of wisdom? You, you, you thought as a man. I'm not thinking of a man. I'm thinking as of God. This is a very important for people out there because uh, um, I use individuals that's in the body of Christ. Or, or who's not coming to church, it, it's like this. God has given you a gift. And on one side of you know um, that God called you. And the other side says, no, God didn't call you because of this, 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 and this. So what happened is you believing, watch this, you believe in not what God said, you believing what the enemy says. In, in Christ, I like what Christ says. He just flat out says Satan. You are believing what Satan said and you're saying what man is saying. Watch this. So you yourself could counsel out what God said if you said it the way man would say it. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? You can talk yourself out of the will of God. Yeah. How? Because you think it as a man. You think it as what the devil. The devil don't want you to prosper and be a, a, a courage and to do what God wants you to do. His whole job is to steal and pull you away from what God, from, from what he wants. Um, he pulling you away from the things of God. Yes, sir. He wants you to know that Whatever God said to you, mm -hmm. that is fact. That's right. But the enemy is going to come along and distort everything. Distort that everything that he says. Ahead. If you let, let me tell you something. He's going to say something. Yeah. I want you to understand as soon as you say what God is saying for you, he's going to do everything and his power to pull you away from what God said, to pull you away from your yeah. destiny and the greatness that God called you to do. Now, when you're pulled away, from the, the um, what God called you and his presence, you begin to behave in a way that's not of God. Can everybody understand that? Anytime you are out of the presence of God, you begin to do things that's not of God. So the question is that he's starting out, and, uh, starting out and saying about wisdom. What wisdom are you listening to? Are you li listening to the wisdom of God or you listen to the wisdom of man? And if you listen, listen to the wisdom of man, it's your job to rebuke that thing. What did I just say? It's your job to rebuke anything that God did not say. Amen. Is right? And I don't want y'all, I, I don't want to give you an out. So well, I don't know what God says. No, you do know. You you do. It's something that you do know. You may deny it. Someone came and told you. But when you when you come in against um, God's work for your life, 
do you out of his will? Now, let's go to same chapter. Let's go to read verse 15. Just go up. Matthew 16, I want to read verse 15. Are y'all there with me? Amen. He said unto them, but whom say ye that I am? Jesus asked a question. And Simon Peter answered and said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him and said unto him, what did he say? Blessed art thou, Simon Bajona, for what? Flesh and blood have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Now we talk about God's wisdom. Now remember, Peter just said verses later that uh, he rebuked Jesus. Now he, he's the Spirit of God or the Father, if you want to use it, he is telling um, Jesus who he is. And Jesus said, look, flesh and blood didn't reveal it to you. Only my Father. Only my Father revealed it to you. You see this? At one hand, you can say what God revealed unto you about somebody else. And on the other hand, just a few minutes later, you can sit there inside with the enemy. Uh-oh. Yes, sir. The world. Jesus said the world is the enemy. The world's the enemy. That's right. It, it, so, so if we look at what Jesus said, uh-huh. the enemy to me too. Yeah, the, so why is it, why is it, y'all, that most of the body of Christ side with the enemy and not side in with God? Oh, that's a very good question. And I know you won't answer it. You, you want to answer it? Yes, ma'am. They said, can you, so people can hear what you said. Uh, we're going to, this mic right here. Okay, go ahead. I said, I believe it's because um, so many times we focus on what we see and what we see naturally. Uh-huh. So, so what you're saying then is a lot of people can't see. Mm -hmm. Correct. So since you can't see, you're always going to side with the enemy. Yeah. Since you can't see. Since you, 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 you can't see, you're siding with the enemy because you don't see that. And the enemy is doing his job. Because we talked about last week, you looked in the mirror dimly because you can't see the things that God called you to do. It takes the spirit of God to reveal it to you. Do you see how the spirit of God can use you and reveal something to you? And then five minutes later, yeah. you want to rebuke what God said? Yeah. Just, just that quick. Because it's your job to stay in his presence. Mm -hmm. It's not his job to keep you in his presence. Because why? You, this thing that y'all all want is his free will. You have free will to be in his presence or be out of his presence. You have free will to do what he called you to do or what you want to do. And, and I'm gonna say, that's, that's it. Him or not. He said you either what? Gather or you scatter. There is no in between. There is black and there is white. God don't deal in the gray. Right. Amen. He said, God don't deal in the gray. We try to live in the gray. God doesn't live God, no word. In the gray is lukewarm. He'll spit you out of his mouth. Yeah. And, and the problem is Jesus always says pray for laborers because the laborers are few. No one wants to work for God. Amen. No one. Everybody wants a job and work for the man. But no one wants want to work for God. Not understanding if you work for God, God will bless you. I don't care where you are. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. yeah. yes. Amen. So, so we have part timers that works for God part time and then the rest of the time they live for the world. A part time job is don't work like full eight hours a lot of times, right? They work mm -hmm. half the time. And the problem is the part time you're still in a gray area. The part time is you haven't fully sold out to God. Now, the question is you're either all in or you're all out. That's yeah. not, God is not hokey pokey. I mean, you can't stand like this. I mean, you, you, and depending on where the wind goes or how you feel, because God don't care about your feelings. I feel like I'm just going to do what I want to do today. I feel like I want to do for God. It doesn't work that way. Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, I, I want to take you to another example. I want to give you a couple, couple of examples. Matthew chapter number seven. Matthew 7, and we're going to start at verse number 21. Matthew 7, we're going to start at verse number 21. Because now, we're still talking about the spiritual man, but the problem that we have is the wisdom. And then um, he says um, in verse 
Corinthians chapter 2. I'm going to read this to you. You're going to go there. My speech at my, my and my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but um, in demonstration of the spirit of power. Now, I like that. Um, as you go to the next verse, what does that mean? Demonstration in the spirit and the power of God. Can anybody give me an example of what that means? Demonstrating, I like what Paul says, demonstrating of the spirit and of power. Anybody understand what that means? Demonstrating. Paul says, I demonstrated, right? Spirit and of, of power. Enticing words, I speak, but I demonstrating, tell me what I'm speaking, in the spirit, and in the power of God. Oh, that's, that's something else. So then, what is he talking about? Because I don't want to skip over that part. What does that even mean to you about demonstrating the spirit and of the power of God in your life? Oh, see, it, it makes you think. It, it, it makes you think about, can I even look at myself, no examples how dem the demonstration of the spirit and a power in my life. See, my example that I would tell you, if, if I raise the dead, it's a sign, right? You think I, I am a mighty man of God. If I lay hands on the sick, right, and they get well, then you think that I am a, a, a mighty man of God. I'm demonstrating God's power. But what happens if that's not so? So then my example would be my life. I remember what I used to do. I remember uh, who I thought I was. I remember when destiny that God has for me, I wasn't living it. All the greatness that he had in me, I wasn't living it. So my example is me because I understand where God brought me from. Oh, you got to get that. I, I, I remember my conversation and my behavior back in the day. I remember the things that I have done back in the day was in, was in God. And guess what? And I remember that I couldn't do nothing to get out of it. But because of Christ Jesus and his blood, it pulled me out of that darkness into his marvelous sight. Yeah. And so now the power that he's talking about, it was demonstrated in me. Oh, come on. Oh, so, so the demonstration of the spirit is how the spirit led me to Christ. I want everybody to understand that. The spirit, so in my life, like you can say, in your life, when he called you out of darkness, or you can still be in darkness, and to his marvelous life, I can demonstrate what, who he is. Oh, yeah. It's not about what I've done. It's about the fruit that I bear. It's about how I'm living my life now. It's about how far he brought me from, and I, and I don't want to go back. My desire and my will is not to go back. His desire and his will is for me to stay in his presence. I want everybody to get that. You, 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 I want everybody to think about that. Have you really changed your life? Not for a moment. Not you doing something and going back. But has it totally changed your life that you don't even want to look back and go back to what you used to be? And when you happen to do something that takes you back, it's something in you. It's, a, it, it, it's like a fear. And it brings you back over to God. Yes, sir. Dad, he will bring you out of darkness. Yes. To the light. Yes. Yes. Yes, they want to come back. They, they want to come darkness back. was too great. Darkness, darkness is right. to them was the persuasiveness of darkness was better than the persuasiveness of the, the words that God has spoken to them. We think that right there in darkness is greater than God. Darkness is fun. Uh -huh. I, I remember living in, anybody remember living in darkness? Oh, yeah. oh raise your hand if you remember living in dark. Come on. Come on, raise your hand. If you raise your hand, a lot of people don't remember. I remember. You don't remember? You don't remember living in darkness? <laughs> remember going to the clubs and you're, you're, you're clubbing and, and wanting to, to get the girls you want, wanted all of it about you. Come on, you thought you was the greatest thing since um, sliced bread. Amen. You, you can wait to go to the club because you know that what you're going to do, you know, hey, that you're going to accomplish. You know, all the females, you stay in the mirror trying to look good, trying to catch somebody, amen, trying to catch a man, a good man, all these things. That, uh, um, some of y'all used to love to drink and get drunk or, or, or pass the joint. Some of us enticed by lying and stealing and manipulation to get what we want. We all, you know, we, the darkness was fun. I thought it was until I came over to Christ. I'm like, man, you know what? I was messed up. 
I, you know what? I, I thought that was fun. But when you study the word and talk about the word, that joy is everlasting. I had to get dressed and go to a club for something temporary. But having something everlasting like Christ Jesus ain't nothing better than that. I can have fun with God. I can have fun with people in a in a um, um, spirit filled way than, than I used to. Yes, sir. I remember when I uh, uh, first came to the Lord, and I used to go to happy hours. Uh huh. And so I brought my Bible with me to the happy hours, <laughs> and I started talking to them. You, oh, you're a Bible talker. I mean, you are lost. You are straight to hell. Amen. Right. Amen. And you're right about that. Because look. <laughs> <laughs> so y'all got to understand that a lot of people not more people are going to disregard what you say. And they did. Yeah, they, they did. It, 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 it doesn't matter if you speak to a hundred person, but that one person. That, that, that one person that made a difference. But that one person you'll see can make a difference in other people's lives. You understand that? It, we're not trying to say the whole club we will desire, but if I can just find just one, one just this one person today. If, if today, I, I, if Lord, lead me just to one person, save and I say, maybe I need some encouragement. Some, maybe I need something to, to, my, to help them out. Or, or, or maybe someone who's not saved that I can speak Jesus in life. I don't know if they will get saved. I may not see them no more. But if I can throw a seed in and one person's life, just one a day, think about that, one a day, that's, that's 30 a month. A lot of us don't do it once a month. Which is, if I can just do it, just, just Lord, send me. I'll go, Lord. I will go. Send me. I will speak the words that you want me to speak. I'll say what you want me to say. I'll even give. I have to give. I'll give somebody the last dime and let them know that Christ is the awesome way. Just one person. I don't need a big crowd. If I church never get to 100, it doesn't matter. If I can just get one person. If you get 100 people to live for God. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, one person. Just one person. Give me, give me one righteous man. One, just, just one. He'll save, he'll save the nation. He, 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 could, he, he couldn't find the one person. He said he, he tried to negotiate with, with God. Abraham negotiated with God. God, don't kill the whole town. You know, of Sodom and Gomorrah. What if it's 30? What if it's 35? I mean, he kept narrowed down 25. You know, he said, what, what if it's 10? What if it's five? But what if it's just one? If it's one, I save the nation. He couldn't find couldn't find one. Oh, well, watch this. It, it, is it one person in your neighborhood? Is, is it one person in your city? It, it, is it one person in America? Because everybody I see is going downhill. It, 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 it's been going down in, 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 in a quick way. God's thing going down in a quick way. Preachers and pastors and leaders and prophets going down a quick way. Why? They left the first love. And then the last day is hard for wax cold. The Bible said, yeah, you're right. The last day is hard for wax cold. People want them to tickle their ears. And, and everybody strive for greatness and greed and, and power and all. That's not God. That's Amen. So then, whew, so <laughs> now where am I? Okay, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, watch this, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth what? Uh, the will of my Father which is in heaven. Watch this. Many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Now, they, they said, now, I've done all these things, and I love this part. I'll give you an example. Most of the people who don't go to church, don't don't praise God, who who, who cursing and stealing and cheating and fornicating and, and um, adultery, get up on the Grammys or get up on some award show. I thank God. Yeah. What do you thank God for? You haven't even seen the church. <laughs> Musicians come in. I thank God he gave me his talent. Have you listened to your own music? <laughs> Wait a minute, hold on. Is that attracting the people of God or is that attracting the world? Don't be thanking God because God has nothing to do with that. I want everybody to understand that. God ain't with you. Just because you say, I thank God. No, I don't say Jesus Christ. Very few people say Jesus. I don't know what God they serving, but 
my God, who has a son named Jesus, has the Holy Spirit, does, it does not uh, in you. Not a compared to, not compared to its own. You can't judge. Why not? I, I'm I'm showing you their life. Look, 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 look I'll tell you guys. Like, let me put a song. They just song as a hit record, and they got the, they got the Grammy or what's the awards or or uh, all the mother award BT and all. You know the awards they have shows the Tony and stuff. At, music awards and actors up there said, "I thank God." And, and, and I was like, "No, please stop thanking God," because some people are confused. See, if I was in a show, I says. Tell me what, when you thank God, when's the last time you've been in church? What is what is Christ in you? Or you've been led by the Spirit of God? Because if you're not none of those, then quit thanking God. Or, or just what? Please, if you say you thank God, just name your God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Look, name, because I don't want to get confused with the true and living God. So your God, just name him. <laughs> if he say, just say, Satan is my God. Don't just say, put a last name on it. <laughs> Do something to identify what God you're talking about. Look, now, now they said they do all these things. Like, they do all these things. This is awesome. I, they, 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 we did all these things for you. And then he says in verse, um, what, 23? No. In verse, I, after he said in verse 22, he says, In thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. So they are tooting their horn really good. It sounds good. Then in verse 23, And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. Now that word iniquity means illegally or the violation of law. You have violated the law. Uh oh. You've done all these, those things because of my name, but you didn't do it my will. You did it all for fame, for glory. Then I'm letting you know my name is powerful. But none of those things brought people to Christ. None of those things that you did show Christ. He says, think about that. We all want a sign. Show me a sign. The best sign to show them is your life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Am I right about that? Yeah. Look, look, I can raise there, raise it, but, but does that tell you actually how I live my life? I want everybody to know how you live your life. Now, do you mess up sometimes? Yes. Do you stay in that area? No. No, not if you're a spiritual man. So then it goes on and says this. So in Matthew 24, I just have to take you to this to I always want to give you the scripture to back up what we're saying. In Matthew chapter 24, and I'm going to say verse 23, because they worked in iniquity and it was illegal and they did all these things. Matthew chapter 24. And I'm going to read verse number 23. It reads this. Then, if any man should say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise, what? False Christ, and what? False prophets, and shall show what? Great signs and wonders, insomuch that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Now, I, I, I know I keep telling you all about this, but there's a lot of mega churches out there that you say that look at God. He's moving in that church. Look, at he got millions of, I mean, I mean like thousands of people, 20,000, that's three services. And they're looking at the man and not looking at God. You know what? It's not about how you start. That defiles a man. But it's going to be how you finish those who endure to the end. Because when I first got saved in the second year, the third year, the fourth year, it don't matter. I was progressing and learning in God. Does everybody understand that? Until I get a place where, hey, I, 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 I draw a line now what I want to do, what I'm going to do because of the spirit that's in me. And I'll continue to grow. But the Bible always says for those who endure, and it's a lot of things that Satan don't want you to endure. Satan has set up shop in the, in the body of Christ to draw you away. You'll come to church because of the man and not because of God. And me preaching is to come to keep you there. So I'm going to say things to make you feel good. Because the more I make you feel good, because that's what the world wants to see huh? or do things. That's what men's wisdom, they want to see something. 
Yeah, they want some chicken. They, they, they don't care about faith. They want something now. And the more that you see me and how rich I am, they you'll say, if I stay at church, I'm going to get rich like him. Yeah, it doesn't work that way. That's not God at all. Yes, sir. They want to walk out. Say it again. Amen. It always be. I, 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 I never seen Christ where people was happy about what he said. Because <laughs> his word was holy. His word was right. His word was to rebuke. But his word was also to correct. I want everybody to understand that. He's trying to get us where he wants us to be. Yeah. Not promising you millions of a car or a house. Those are the benefits you get. But that's not what he cares about. Because he said, I give you the benefit, if you, but you think like the Gentiles, right? He says, seek ye first the kingdom, uh, kingdom of God and his righteousness. And then all those things will be added to you. You don't know what's added to you until you see what the spirit is telling you, what's yours. Mm -hmm. Some of us chasing things that's not of the spirit. You chase things that's of the world. I want to be like him. I want to be like the Smith. I want to be like the Joneses. I want to be like that football player. I want to dress like them. I, be, I can't wait to get my new joys at $200. That's what the world has said. I can't wait to get my I mean, some true religion jeans and stuff. And it says true religion. So I'm buying the name and don't care about the product. Yes, ma'am. There are a lot of people that seek the kingdom, but most of the time you find they're not seeking the righteousness. Oh, and that's good. Know how they yes. So, Yes. Amen. I mean, we seek the kingdom, but he always says, and he didn't Amen. stop. And it's righteousness. See, the, the thing I'll have to ask you again, what kingdom are you in? Amen. Are you my next door neighbor or are you living in a whole nother um, zip code? Are you living in the kingdom of God or who? The kingdom of darkness. How many kingdoms are there? I like that. There are only two kingdoms. Two masters. He said, you're going to love the one and hate the other. Only two. He always breaks down. It's good and it's evil. How many, how many is that? Two. Good. What? And evil. There's two. Holy or what? Not holy. Righteousness. Sanctified or unsanctified. It's only two. Gathering or scattering. Love for God or love the world. You see that? Watch this. They're going to hate you because they hated me or they're going to love you because you're with them. Yeah. Oh, man. Which one are you? Hmm? Choose you this day who you may serve. Now, um, so I wanted to let you know to make you understand as, as we get into the last verse. As you or a spiritual man, you have to use God's wisdom Amen. and not man's wisdom or the wisdom of the world. That's very important. You have to know the difference between that. Amen. So when I get up here and preach, as Paul was saying, I'm, I, it's not my idea to talk with your words that will entice you, me, that will persuade you to be um, something that you're not supposed to be. My job is to teach you the word, the powerful word of God, and the word will change you. Can, you understand that? What I just say, the, what will change you? The word of God will change you. Is it hard between wisdom of God and wisdom of man? Watch this. Like I said before, I want everybody to get this. I'm going to speak over my life. I want to speak what he said. Y'all got that? So my speech is, Lord, I pray first, watch this not for stuff, that I may do your will. And I ask God, what you want me to do today? That's his will. The other side is, God, I want that car, I want that house, and show me how to do it. God says, whatever you do, he's a good, he's a good God. He'll pay you well. For a lot of, he'll bless you. But he'll give you life and more abundance. But you have to do it his will. Will the devil give you gifts? Yes, he will. Yes. He changed it. And you're like, you'll call that God. And I say, it wasn't God. That was Satan. But he wouldn't let me got it. Oh, it's up to you. He'll let you get it. But it was that God. God said, I'll give you all good gifts. Now, the last verse is Luke chapter 10. 
verse 17. And we're close. Luke chapter 10, verse 17. Luke chapter 10. Amen. In verse 17. Tell me when you're ready. Luke 10 and 17. Amen. And the 70 returned again with what joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject. Now, we just read the bad thing they said they could do. Here's another verse. Even the devils are subject unto us through what? My name. And he said to them, unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you what happens? Power to tread on serpents and scorpions. Stop right there. Uh, look up at me. The scripture does not say I give you power to get stuff. Right. Oh, y'all got to get that. I gave you power to tread over serpents, right? And scorpions. I didn't give you power to become a millionaire. That's not what I'm talking about. People say that God gave us power to be millionaires. Well, where's that in the scripture? Huh? God gave me power to get a, a beautiful wife or a handsome man. Is that in the scripture? No, it's not nowhere in the scripture. God gave me power to get this house, this car. Why? And you say, that's faith. No, no. Faith is what God said. Faith is not what man, you, or the world says. Faith comes from God. Y'all with me now? So this is what Jesus says. And he says, and over all, what? The power of the enemy. Y'all see that? Let me read that. Y'all not happy. I have to get y'all happy with this. Verse 19. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions. And over what? All, come on, all. Let's say all. All the power of the enemy. He said all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Oh my goodness. Now he said, I give you all power. All power you need over any enemy that comes your way. You tread, give you power over everything that will not hurt you. I, I'm telling you that he says that nothing shall hurt you. That's what he said. I'm giving you power, not for stuff. I'm giving you power over the enemy. I'm giving you power of the one thing that's drawing you away from God. Meaning, I gave you the power. He's not going to do it for you. I gave you the power to do it. Does everybody understand that? Yeah. Not in man's wisdom. Not what you're saying. Not what the world says. But only what he says. Amen. A spiritual man don't care about the word. They're not calling Dr. Field. They're not calling over other, other people. I'm not calling a prophet online to, to tell me what God said. Because they can't tell me what God said. If I want to know what God said, I get along by myself and hear his voice. Does everybody understand that? He goes, I said, by nothing, by no means shall hurt you. Now watch this. Now they was happy, remember? They was happy with what they done. Verse number 20. Notwithstanding in this, rejoice not. He said, now, I don't want you to rejoice that you have power in it. Wait a minute, God. Jesus, now, I got excited. Boy, I got, come on, I got excited about the scorpions. I got excited about the serpents. I got excited that the enemy can't touch me. Now, I'm ready to, to break down and just shout. Some people say they do their little dance and all that and run around the room and all that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm excited. You know that, hey, nothing can hurt me. I'm getting, oh, man, I'm just falling out. I'm thanking God. and I'm doing all these things that, that the world would do. That say No. He says, don't rejoice because of the table. Don't rejoice because you have power over the enemy. He, he, he didn't come for you to rejoice on that part. Look, watch this. That part was easy. That's the easy part right there, rejoicing over. It's easy for that to happen. You raising the dead and still the sick. Oh, that's just, that's just a benefit you have. Don't rejoice over those things. Remember the last scripture we read? The people rejoice because um, they, they, they prophesied. With all those things, he said, depart from me. Here they said the same thing. But they were workers of iniquity. He says this. Don't rejoice because of that. He says, but rather rejoice. Read it with me. Because why? Your name. Come on. Y'all got to say your name. Or written. Oh, come on. Now y'all have, have to jump and shout and thank God that my, your name is written in heaven. Oh, see, no one jumped and shout. I thought y'all would get up. I kind of vision that people would get up and say, Lord, I just thank you that my name is written. I, I, I mean, you know. Uh, 
Because see, if I sit there and pull out my wallet and I give you, I give you a hundred, you got a hundred, I'll be happy. Give y'all a hundred, I'll get excited. Oh, thank you. I needed that. And I say, y'all, your name's written in heaven. See, look, <laughs> look how everybody look. You see, you see, you see the, you, you, you see, your, 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 if, if I had a camera, if, if I could just scan in and show y'all, if I give everybody, give my bank, if I had it, give everybody a thousand dollars, be excited. And say, yeah, I thank you, God, for this thousand. And then I tell you, don't rejoice in that. Rejoice with your name written in heaven. What do you do? Oh, see, see, now we got somebody to get it. Hey, see, everybody sit down. If, 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 look, look, if I had the money and said, come and get it, this thousand dollars got me up and running. Uh, see, and I say, I got a pen and write your name in heaven. Uh, well, you know, it ain't signing up on that. But look, hold on. It's like, let's, let's. Let's let's make a deal. I'll give you five grand today. Oh, your right name's written in heaven. What you want me to take? Right. Oh no, the right. Okay. Yeah. See, everybody ain't gonna say that though. Everybody goes, you tell a child five thousand. If, if I have Christ, I have everything. But y'all don't get that. Look at you. No one's rejoicing that I'm going to heaven. I'm heaven bound. Oh, yeah. Lord, I'm all right. I'm, I'm, I'm for the Shoot. If I'm Oprah and I and I have a bunch of keys out here and I say keys out here, we got cars. Each key, y'all can have a car. All brand new 2024. Y'all come up here and get the key and round the door. So y'all, your name's written in, in, uh, in heaven. There's no rejoicing. Something is wrong with this world. They sick. Watch this. Something is wrong with the church. Yeah. Uh oh, let's let, let say it again. Something is wrong with the world. They sick. Something is wrong with the church. Because why? They sick. They rejoice like the world for stuff. And I talked to y'all about that. Seek ye first the kingdom. He said, You act like Gentiles. They get excited about stuff and not get excited about God. Which one are you? Oh. Which one are you? You get excited about God, or you get excited about stuff. Oh, see, we got the same people talking. Same people talk. Everybody else is like wondering. I mean, you don't know how much that 5,000, you must don't understand about that 5,000 each, but you don't understand that God can sit there and, and make it uh, and counsel debts. So you're trying to catch up where God can eliminate it. Oh, y'all don't get it. The devil said, I give you five grand. You're still excited. Y'all see y'all smile and stuff. I say, oh, you name written in heaven and you're not happy. Oh, that's sad. That's sad. Is something wrong with that picture? If I have my phone, I'll take a picture of 10,000 and I'll take a picture of your name's written in heaven. Which one would you like? Which one you think wins the picture? And so I put it in contest and say, which one, which one is, is people more happier? Is it the 5,000 or if it's in heaven? I see two or three people enjoy yourself in heaven and the rest of y'all. I need my 10 grand. <laughs> I need my 10 grand. Yes, ma'am. Because the 5,000 is immediate. It's immediate. Heaven is not, I can't see heaven. I can get to heaven tomorrow. No, wait, hold on. You can die tomorrow. Am I right about that? Hey, tomorrow's not promised to you. I mean, it's, it's bad. It is horrible. It is terrible. For all your kids get a brand new car when they turn 17, 18. When, when these adults get the car they wanted, that $80,000 car, and all of a sudden, it lasts one day. Your car lasts one day. You, it lasts one day. Why? Tomorrow you're dead. Uh-oh. You got the car in hell. <laughs> Come on. I got stuff. That I got to enjoy for what? One day. Oh, I get to enjoy heaven for eternity. Oh wait, oh y'all don't y'all get the nail? Watch this. What's the scripture we were talking about this morning? If a whole man, why would a man sell what his own soul? How's the scripture go? Yeah. Oh yes, sir. what profit a man that would sell his own soul? Oh, I'm sorry. What profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses soul? Come on, say it with me. What profit? a man who gains the whole world I'm a millionaire and going to heaven lose his soul to get the things he wants to look good greed everything of the world 
Oh, he'll know later on. Be too late. What what the man said? He looked up. He says, can, can you give me just a little water? Just a cool my tongue off? Can you, just, just, you go, can, you, can you go back and tell my brothers that I made a great mistake and I don't want them to make the same mistake? He said, no. Nope. <laughs> y'all well, see that? The man realized he was wrong. And now he's concerned about other people. It's too late. It's too late. After somebody at his front door with, 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 with all these swords and stuff, wanted something. He built more barns and the man needed some help. Instead of helping the man out, he said, man, I want to do all my stuff. He built another barn to put more stuff in. Still, the man's at his neighborhood right there by his mailbox. Uh -huh. He can't give him nothing. Gain the whole world. That's where the world's going. Gain the whole world. You. Gain the whole world. You know what? You know how to pick your career? You know how people pick their career? Who pays the most money? I'm doing this for money. I'll be set for life. No. If you live for God, you'll be set for life. Amen. Oh, y'all got to get it. If you do it, because eternity is what? Eternity. And y'all don't understand. Watch this. People, the, the oldest man that ever lived was 669. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, that, was, Methu that was Methusium, right? Yeah. Methusium. Methusium. Sorry. Now, now look here. Ain't nobody living like that no more. We thank God for 70. Amen. Hey, that's what the Bible says. Am I right about that? The word, the word says it's changed big time. Kids are dying. You never know when you're going to go. You better make up your mind today. We don't know that. We don't know. Yes, I know that's right. I, I, because I choose him over stuff. Amen. All right. We'd like to thank you, everybody. Um, for joining us on today. I hope everybody had a great time. And um, so we ask the people out there who's watching or going to watch it later that a spiritual man, that a spiritual man knows the difference between the wisdom of God and the wisdom of man and of the world. And only the Spirit can tell them that. So I showed you today how the decisions was with God and how the decisions was with the world. There is a difference. Watch this. And both were doing the same thing. But one was with God yeah. and one was with him. With the world. You understand? You can do all those things. A lot of people going to hell that goes to church every Sunday. A lot of people in, in, in church healing the sick, raising the dead. I mean, you know, doing all these wonderful signs but going straight to hell. That's why it's so awesome. Jesus showed me a sign. You mean I can show you something right now? Look at my life. If you knew how I used to be, and look at me now. If you don't like me now, you would have sure hated me back then. But I, I can tell you, demonstrate God has changed me so much. And guess what? He's still changing me for the better. Amen. 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 So each day I, I demonstrate him in my life. You want a real example? He's doing it in my life. I want that to be your testimony. How you live, where he brought you from. And guess what? I'm excited about where he's taking. I'm just riding along and do, I'm being led by the Holy Spirit. There is a difference. My wisdom comes from him and him only. Not from the world, not from other men, and not from what that, 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 that small voice is telling me, don't do that because it's better for you to do this because at the end of the day, you get stuck. No, you better, get, you better follow the Spirit and hear what the Spirit says. And I love this verse. My sheep Knows my voice and a strange voice he will not hear. And the youth, let me tell you, it's not about your allowance, it's not about getting a car or getting your license. It's all about the things of God. Amen. If you don't have the money, uh, and your parents have the money to get you a car, I tell you right now, you pray. God can open the door. It doesn't matter how old you are. You you pray. And the first prayer is pray for your parents that they understand the faith in God. Don't pray they get more money so you can get a car. You pray that your family is, is unified in Christ, knowing that if your family's with God, everything will be all right. Amen. And what we that's right. And what we lack in is that we forget to tell the kids, hey, pray for me. Amen. 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 Key family, the kids pray for me. Uh -huh. The Jacob family, hey, yeah. tell the kids, hey, y'all pray for me. The great family tell the kids, hey. Uh, pray for me. The Miller family say, hey, hey, pray for me. The Parker family, hey, children, hey, pray for me. Amen. 
God's not through me. But I don't mind that you pray for me just, just a little bit. Just think about me just for a minute and ask God to be with me. I, I, I ask God to show me where I, I'm falling short so I can get there. Right. Yeah, amen. All right, then. So we'll see you all next week. Amen. Give God a hand of praise. He is so good.